the name of Jesus, we are glad this morning to be in your presence. The psalmist said it, couldn't have said it better. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now we are in your house. Father, cause us to hear your voice. That voice that is behind the word, cause us to hear it this morning. And in hearing it, let lives be transformed. Let souls be healed and impacted with grace from above. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. What to do to turn situations around? But one, because we go on a series as we normally do. The big question is, which I know applies to all of us. Have you ever been in a place where you were tempted to say, I don't think this is going to work. This thing that I'm trusting for, I don't think is going to be. Do you understand me? <laughs> for how long if it's going to be? And, you know, those kind of questions keeps ringing in your mind. And some have even given up without saying it. A, 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 a scripture at times, we say, have you ever been in a valley? You know, the Bible talks of valley. The Bible talks of mountains. You know, maybe you are in a hole, like people will say, and you are wondering, what is all this? For how long? Because you feel you are doing everything you know to do, and the result is not coming. Well, there is good news for you. Keep your hope fresh in God. And that's why we picked the scriptural reading that we read this morning, because there's something in it. The Lord Jesus Christ had that great uh, experience of transfiguration. We know that, but that's not his story. But when he came down from the mountain, reflecting the glory of God, a man met him. And the man met him about his child. And the man also says something interesting. It's not just, Lord, I need you to cure my child. He said, I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Now, you may take that to mean, of course, the disciples couldn't do anything, but that's not true. Because we have read also where the disciples says, when he sent them out, Master, even the devils were subject to us. You remember? So casting out devil was not a problem to them. They, they've been doing that. They just couldn't handle hand this situation. So the man was perplexed. That's Luke... Uh, 10, 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils, not just one, the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So they've been doing this, but they just couldn't get this particular situation done. Pastor, in the church, or you are hearing me online, the pastors are praying, the pastors are prayed for you. Are you following me? Over time, but you, you have results in certain area, but just this situation is, is not answering. What do you do? The beauty of it is, thank you. The man showed us there is always an answer in God because the man still got his miracle. Do you understand me? But we want to follow the path. Look at the situation the man was. The sickness, despite the prayers of the priests or the or disciples or the apostles, was still there. And it looks like Perhaps when they finished that day, his hope was dashed. It looks like nothing seems to work. You had a story of the woman with the issue of blood. It's been to many physicians. She's been everywhere, but nothing seems to work. In fact, in our own case, the Bible says it even became worse. So perhaps you are in that situation. You've been believing God for a particular thing. You've been expecting, you've been looking for, you've prayed, you've fasted. There is always hope in God. That's why the psalmist says, Psalm 121, I will lift up what? Mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh what? My help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth, there is always help in God. Somebody say, Pastor, you are confusing me. The disciples they went to, were they not from God? 
<laughs> the pastors praying, were they not from God? Of course, these same disciples as they've cast out devils before, they, they, they've healed the sick before. So what's going on? Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, we'll get results, but none is complete as God is. We are all working with this mandate, right? But no matter where you've gone to, no matter who has prayed for you, everyone is still doing it in his name. I want to show us a part this morning that if you will still look up and lift up your eyes and look up to him and not be discouraged, your solution will come. Jesus is Lord. You know, I'm, I'm being careful here because people will say, well, if I, even if I'm going to go to God, it's still his servants you will go to, right? It's still his men, like the doctors that you will go to, you know, like the theologian, you know. But please hear me. Even when you go, you go believing that God will do it. So you can keep your hope in God. But I want to show you another way this morning. Like Anna, we read her story. She has come to Shiloh how many times? Many times. Shiloh was the place of worship. It was the place of sacrifice, right? So you have been on the situation for so long. I understand that. But I want to show you a part this morning. You know, he said that will show me the part of life. And that part, it does not in any way reduce the impact of the man that he sends. Because when that man went through the disciples, and the Bible says, but they could not cure him, he didn't just go home. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he do? He went to him. I'm trying to, without putting down the ministry of the man of God, help you to see something here this morning. Because even when you go to the man of God, he is in coach, you are going to God. Do you understand me? But I need you to see it in a different light this morning. That my hope is in God. Because don't you ever forget that no man of God is perfect. Don't you ever forget that no man of God can do it all, right? I've been in a meeting praying for people where blind eye was open and some people still went home sick. You, you understand what I'm saying? The key to all this is to directly, passionately look up to him. Amen? Saying, Lord, <laughs> my eyes are on you. I know you can fail. And who is he? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That is... When all that goes, get back to the word. Getting back to the word is getting back to God directly. I mean, you get back to the word. Do you want me to explain that again? Because I've taken patience to let you know I'm not putting down any, I'm not putting down men of God. Look at Pastor Amino here this morning with the ring, the wristwatch, these are men of God. I'm not putting them down. But that they pray for you doesn't mean, or they preach to you doesn't mean the way they said it is just going to happen that way. And perhaps you found yourself in that situation, I say. That's why I say what to do to turn situations around when it seems not to be working. Amen. I remember one day, I mean, I've told you this before, because back home, I like taking care of uh, students, pay their school fees. And I remember one week, two ladies came, but I could not give them money. And I felt so bad. I don't know them. I do that. I was doing that a lot. 
And I had God say to me, you are not God. And he said to me, I am the only one that can meet the needs of all people. Because I felt bad, I couldn't help them. I love helping people. And he said to me, you are not, and it's true, I'm not God. Because if I'm God, you know what I will have done. Amen? Like your PhD now, I will have just given you without reading. <laughs> so you see, is we are all doing what we can, but we are not God. So don't be discouraged. Amen? But what do you do? You turn to him directly. And who is he? He is his word. John 1.14 tells us, and the word was what? Made flesh. That man went to Jesus, right, physically. And Jesus is what? The word. And we're going to see in this series how getting back at the word helps us to turn hopeless situations around. Hallelujah. Because if you can activate the word of God in the midst of your disappointments, then you can find help from God. When Jesus came down into that valley that day, and that man went to him directly, of course, he, 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 he talked about his disciples that, how long shall I be with you? Right? But again, further down the line, he said, but this kind go ahead not but by prayer and fasting. So let's leave that. But this man get at the word directly. And his solution came. He found an answer in him. He brought the living word into the situation. And the word always produces the answer. Glory to God. We need to know what to do. That's where I'm going. When we find something, it's not working. There are steps to take. If it's not working, if it couldn't, it's not answering, and you're trying all the formulas that are, you have heard, you know, we preach with points. <laughs> I read this to you because I got it from a man of God who told his story. Or maybe I should paraphrase it. He said he bought a car, a brand new car, latest in town one day, one time. And they love driving that car. You know, when your car is like the latest in town, not like some that the, the manufacturers have forgotten that they made it, you know. <laughs> he said, and one day, as he was driving this brand new car, he stopped. Stopped working. And he could have said, I don't want to miss the points, Uh, just come out of the car and say, look at this brand new car. I'm so disappointed. It's not working. I'll leave it alone. So he could have gotten out of the car. He could have decided to leave the car and say, well, I see it working for others, but it's not working for me. Have you heard it before? It's working for others, but it's not working for me. So forget about it. He said, but he didn't do that. He could have given up. I remember someone, when we first moved here, we did pretty much all these renovations together. We were with us for some time. And after some time, I wasn't seeing him again. And I called him and he said, he's just tired with God. He doesn't think all these things we're saying can work. I'm not joking. So and you might have come across people like that. Or maybe you are at that point yourself. Because for how long? Sickness, debt, debt, unfulfilled dreams, and all this. He said, but he didn't give up. He didn't say, well, if it's working for them, that's this. It's not working for me. 
He said he called a mechanic. You see, there's always what to do. You can give up. He said, I called the mechanic. He came and checked the car. Finally, he found some disconnected wires or one wire, I don't know. Something was disconnected. He said, it was just a little wire. He said, I even thought it was something major that made the car to stop, but it was just minor. He connected the severed wire and I turned the key and it worked. And then he made this analysis. You may get some wonderful teaching and truth from one of God's anointed teachers and you jump and celebrate it. You jump at that opportunity to put it to work. You say, it's so wonderful. Then you hit a problem doing it. When you try to apply what you've learned, but the operation fails, you say, it will work, but maybe not for me. But you see, the Bible says the scripture is of no what? Who can finish that statement for me? Uh, we leave Pastor Amino is so busy with writing paper now, he doesn't remember what the scripture says. Who can finish that for me? Did I ask you? I'm asking those who are in this, not somebody who is in uh, Samaria. He said the Bible is of no private interpretation. That is, it's written for all. So you can say it worked for me, but it doesn't work for, for that. No, 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 no. The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons, but in every nation, everyone that calls on him is accepted on. Amen. So don't say, well, maybe the way Dr. Molex is dressed with this is beautiful attire. That's why the word is working for him. You get my point? No. The word is written to us all. Amen. It works when we apply it rightly. The point is, in spiritual things, just like you talk of science, when you are doing things, you put things together right. The environment has to be right. The conditions have to be right. The temperature, do you understand me? It's the same spiritually. So you may not be in the same condition. Do you get my point? You may not be in the you may be quoting the same scripture, but you are not in the same condition in applying it. No one knows, only God. But let's even put all that aside. Even as it is not working, the truth is you must learn to cooperate with God's principles because they will work. The word always works. When nothing seems to work, you need him to show you your loose connections. Okay, where I'm going now. Just like that car had just one little connection, you know, broken connection somewhere. Your loose connection may not be my loose connection, may not be his loose connection. Are you getting the point? And as the prayer, the wise ones pray. Show me thy way, David will say, lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. And if, you, if you're a student or scholar of the Bible, you should know that. David prayed one day, shall I pursue? He said, pursue. You will overtake them. Then another day he said, he prayed. He said, shall I pursue? He said, pursue, but wait first. Wait until you hear the sound on the mulberry trees. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you getting my point? It's not just flat. No. The children of Israel, they were before Jericho. Is that what elders do in church? They balance and see if they are thicker, you see? Now watch, the children of Israel, they were before Jericho. They did what God said they should do, and Jericho was fell flat. Then the following day or week, that's a small country. 
Let's just send 30,000. They forgot the world. They, they have assumed that they brought Jericho's wall down. That's actually what happened. Oh, we did that one. Let's just, just send 3,000 people. That's a small one. We've, and then they ran and fell flat before 3,000 people. So you see the conditions that we do things. Do you get my point? They're so important. And they ran crying to God. God, what happened? God said, what are you telling me what happened? Did I say you should go? Or you went by yourself? Because they assumed. Are you following me? They just got the wall of Jericho down. What are you talking about? This is a small country. So we do a lot of things. But in spiritual things, most of the time you need to pray, Lord, show me my loose connection. Could just be something. Amen? Just something there. Show me my loose connection. That's why I brought the story of this man with his car. It isn't that the Bible does not work. God's word works. But you must realize that if there is something wrong, it is not with God. Nor his word. But with you. With me. The quicker you accept that, the faster you get things done. Amen? Rather than blaming him, giving up, asking questions that you won't get answers to, the quicker you accept that, the faster your results begins to show. It is because you have a loose connection somewhere. And if you are determined to get something from God, you need to investigate and discover your loose connection or connections. The Bible says God watches over his word to perform it. Amen? He watches over his word to perform it. When you are seeking God and you are believing faithfully and trying to apply God's words to a situation, and nothing seems to work, there are checkpoints that you must go through one by one. Some of us want to do things, want to do things wrong, and never even want to get corrected. Oh, I've come across things like that. There are checkpoints. And I'll start with the first checkpoint today. And the first checkpoint is check up on your own life. That's where it always begins from. Do what? Can I hear that loud, louder? Check up on your own life. The wise person will do that. Instead of pointing accusing fingers. Check up on your own life. And what are we talking about? The first thing you need to turn God's great such light on your own heart. To check up on yourself and on your own life. Find out if you have overlooked anything that needed to be made right. Amen. For example, there are a lot of things we check. Jesus was speaking in Mark 11, 25. He said, and when you start praying, what? I didn't hear you. When you start praying, do what? Forgive. And let's read the remaining things. If you have hurt against any, forgive. That your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So you could do all that the Bible says to do, but you have more unforgiveness. That's a loose wire. In fact, I don't think that's ordinary a loose wire. That's a loose cable. <laughs> you get my point? And with that loose wire, you will crank the engine, but even if you're a doctor, it doesn't matter. It will start. Amen? 
And we have a lot of them all through scriptures, but mostly some significant ones. You had issues with envy, jealousy, strife, rot. Anything against anybody that may be a blockage. Lord, show me. Please, let's see Psalm 139 from verse 23. We just read two verses. And you need to be praying this prayer for yourself, Lord. I'd like us to read it out loud. Psalm 23, 139, verse 23. One to go. Is that loud? Start again. One to go. Uh huh. Uh, excuse me. We are still on 23. That's a very significant prayer. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and do what? And know my thoughts. It will show you you in a way that you can't even see. Because most of the time we like covering up ourselves. Now can you read verse 24 together again? Uh, won't you put it up? One to go. Uh, uh, excuse me. Can we read lively? Okay. One to go. Elder don't like that one because he wasn't reading it. <laughs> Search my heart, O oh Lord. Try me and see if there be what? Any wicked way in me and help me out. That's pretty much what he's saying. Because when you, if you have a loose wire that is pertinent to your car starting, until you fix that loose wire, you may have a very beautiful trailer like uh, Pastor Jibril, you know, this guy is like a trailer, but it, it still won't start. You get my point? It can even be a brand new car. <laughs> if there is a loose wire, you're just wasting your time. It's not going to start. Amen? So we need to get this. I'm starting with that today. We need to get this. Because like I said in the morning devotion program, that's why we're concentrating on, on praying a right the last weeks of this year. Because people start praying again. If you do not close up every gap, the devil is a specialist in taking advantage. We know that. That's why he's called the accuser of the brethren. We have had the story of Job. When you have gaps in your system, the devil takes advantage. So when things are not working in such regard, the first thing is to trust God to see those gaps so that you can block them. That's why the Bible says, give no place to what? To the devil. He wants to take it. You know, we've read the story of Job. And God said to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? There is none like him, a man that has true evil and all that. An upright man. And Satan said, well, I can't touch him because you are what? Put an edge round about him. And you know that story. But what we didn't know was that even though there was that edge, there was a gap that Job himself created. And Job said that to us pretty much in Job 3.25. That gap and actually, if you read the earlier verses, you will have noticed that something fearful was there. You know, the Bible says, his children will, want, will go out and celebrate. He doesn't care. He will come in the morning, sacrifice, in case they have done this. In case they, do you understand me? We, we focus on the sacrifices it does for them, but the, 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 the attitude shows fear. Are you getting my point? And Job now said, for the thing which what? Is what? 
Because what we fear, you fear will come. So God gave him a great age. It's true. But he created gaps with fear. And I tell you the truth, God's people. <laughs> I've seen it. I've told you the story of a friend of mine. How he died. And because of fear of all this. Fear. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. He created that gap. You may not say it, but you always carry this fear. It's not going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. So you hear people say, this bad thing that happened, and I, 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 I thought about it <laughs> before it happened, not knowing that it welcomed me to happen. Amen. So God searched my heart. For fear opened the door to the devil. So we have to check ourselves first. Acts of disobedience. In one area, we block the door in another. You have an edge about you. There's nothing to be afraid of. Even when you see manifestations. Amen. You have an edge around you. They say you have one sickness and then the fear of death grips you. There's no amount of drugs that will save you. You have the blood of Jesus for a covering. He said the angels of the Lord encamped around him that fear him. You say it every day, goodness and mercy shall follow me. So there's nothing to be afraid of. Many times the head is broken down because of unresolved issues in our lives. Like I said, disobedience to instructions. If God's word is not working for you, check up on your own life first. The Bible says, judge yourself and you shall not be judged. The Bible says, examine yourself. 1 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32. Let's see it. 1 Corinthians 11. I'm trying to put us in this pedestal for us to repackage ourselves as we go into the new year. You understand me? And put yourself in order. Because the word always works. <laughs> he said, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. The next verse. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. The first part is the key. If we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Forgiveness. Do you know the Bible even say, there's a way you deal with your wife and your prayers will not be answered. Even like that one, when her husband come, I say, I tell you, I'm the one, the time whether God will answer your prayer or not. <laughs> but I'm just showing you. So you can say you're a prayer warrior, but you have a loose wire. You're not going to get answer. Amen. Those are the key. Search me and know my heart. Oh God, let me see the loose wires that needs to be plugged back. Unforgiveness, all those things, contention. The Bible says you need to keep contention out of your life. Check yourself. Amen. Diverse instructions. If I say the next one, now people will say it's because of money. And it's not so because I've told you something about money. Your money is you. And we read that book, we saw that. And how you do that, he said, if you don't pay your tithe, 
the devourer is free. Now the devourer is manifesting. Are you following me? And you are binding and losing, but there's a loose wire. You get my point? So I'm trying to put us on this pedestal today. Listen to me. Say after me, God word, God's word works. That's key. His promises are yea and amen. Amen? It always works. It works. But if in any situation, it's not working for you, start by what? Checking. There are other steps we are going to take. I'm just taking the first one. Check yourself first. Put yourself in order, if I put it that way. Look at uh, David. They were doing a great thing, bringing the Ark of the Covenant into his resting place. Is that not a great thing? Is that not a great service in the kingdom? But they were not doing it right. You came up, there was a loose wire. So that guy tried to help God, God killed him. And David was so distraught. You know, that's what the Bible says. He pretty much said to God, what's wrong with you? We're doing something for you and you are killing us. What do you mean? Are you following me? And I don't want this hack. Don't, just move it. In fact, like I said, <laughs> he took it to Obedusa's house maybe to collect his remaining wife there because it's something that just killed somebody. Will you now send it to the house of your friend? <laughs> Who did send it to the house of somebody you have been wanting to kill, but they will hold you accountable. And then watch the same hack that just killed somebody now went into Obedidon's house and the Bible says, for the Lord has blessed the house of Obedidon because of the ark of the Lord. What's going on here? The same ark that is killing one is blessing the other. When they told David, David said, go and bring it to my house. <laughs> but are you getting my point? But at first there was a loose wire. God told them this thing must be born on the shoulder of the priest. But they were so civilized, they put it on a new cart. The best car in town. I mean, it sounds good, but, but that's not what he said. That brought them a loose wire. And they cranked the engine, cracked the engine, it didn't start. And David said it. He said, because we did it not at first. After the due order, God made a breach upon us. So check yourselves. As this year is coming to an end, what instructions were given that I didn't respond to? What commands I know to do that I didn't obey? Which ways have I been acting that will stand as loose wires in my life? Lord, search me out. Amen? Excuse me. That your name is Philip, don't give you rights to oppress us. We too, we have our names. We can pick Bible, name, Bible names and their use. Please check yourself. Because God will always work. <laughs> that desire that you have will be granted. But you must put the loose wire back. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So that was the first point. I leave us with that. Amen. Just following simple instructions. Delightfully. Delightfully doing what God commands that you know. Delightfully. You know, that's what the Bible says. Submit yourself unto God. What next? then resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you don't submit and you are binding and losing, it doesn't work. Are you getting my point? Check yourself. Amen. Check yourself. He said, believe the Lord your God. What will happen? But that's not where he stopped. Believe also his prophets, then you will prosper. You, you always see, are you following me? The scriptures laid out for us. Somebody said, ah, what if I don't know any, everything and I'm fouling them? Walk with the ones you know. Amen? Do what? 
work with the ones you know. You just go to a place, a church, for example, which is the key, and all you are doing is looking for all that you will criticize there. That's what, it's not a loose wire, it's a loose cable. Amen? And then you go, you are praying. No, 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 no. God is a God of order. Amen? When you strive in doing right, even when it's not complete, you remember what God told Abimelech? He said, I know that thou did this in the innocency and the sincerity of your heart. He says, so I kept you from sinning. The whole Bible is full. You don't even know one quarter. But the one you know, do what? Do it. Amen? Celebrate the one you know. In innocency and sincerity, work with it. And you will see how things flow. It will flow for you. Glory to God. The word today is check yourself. Put yourself on that protest, pedestal of doing what he says. And as you do, he will open up great doors for you. To bless you, to prosper you, to heal you, to deliver you, to do whatever for you. It's no issue with God. As a matter of fact, he has what? Already done it. But for you to get at this, you must have those loose wires plugged back. I don't want to bring too much examples, let's see, loose, I'm condemning people because my mission is not to condemn. Amen? It's just to give us the light of the word that we walk with. Rise up on your feet with me. And pray that prayer also for yourself. Please put it back up. Psalm 139, 23, I believe. Psalm 129, 139. You see, life can be so smooth and simple. When we choose to do what? Walk with God. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Can you put the two together? It takes time. If you go to a pro presenter, direct. I need you to pray for yourself this morning. And first and foremost to tell God, God, I know you are always right. You are always right. That is not working for me. It's not you. It's me, but I need your help. Amen. <laughs> Lord, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thought. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Just pray. Pray it. You see, that's another thing. When you pray it because you want God to show you you, he answers you. So pray that prayer with us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, yes, Lord of heaven. Beam your such lights. Beam your such lights on us. That we see all those loose wires. All those loose connections. That must be brought together for the light of your presence to shine in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to leave you to do that for yourself this week. As you begin to put yourself in order. And the thing you want to put for next year can still even be accomplished for you before this year is over. <laughs> That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. Great and mighty you are. Marvelous and majestic you are. you are. You are never known to fail. You don't fail. You can fail. That which is to be done, you have done. You are perfected already. The Bible says it. You are the one that perfects the things that concerns us. Lord, these remaining weeks, bring that grace for perfection into these lives. In the name of Jesus. That there has desire that is marked off for this year will not fail. Because you don't count slackness with you as some men count slackness. You are not bound by anything, but by your word. 
Lord, in your mercy, by your grace, bring us to our place of completion before this year is over. In the name of Jesus, let every obstacle be taken away. Let every gap be closed up. In the name of Jesus, and let your blessings be real, even the remaining days of this year in our lives, even as we celebrate your goodness, greatness, and your loving kindness to us. In Jesus' mighty name, lift up your hands and give God praise.